time. I've been calling you all day. Uh, yeah, I know. Sorry, I was smashed at work. OK, and you can find five seconds to call me back. Uh, Marilyn said you wanted to talk about something you saw in the paper. Oh, yes. Why didn't you tell us that the CEO of Stunning Organics was behind the bomb? Uh, hang on, did the article actually say that? It didn't have to. <laughs> the CEO goes missing, and then we find out that he's just been thrown off the board. So... So that's not just a coincidence, Rose? Yeah, maybe not, but the local paper doesn't get to decide that. No, <laughs> the police should. But Marilyn has been getting threats for weeks and the police have done nothing. That is not true. <sighs> okay, so Marilyn gets sent a bomb yeah. that seriously injures her friends and what, we just get an update via the paper? That's not good enough. Kirby, I didn't even know about that article. And frankly, it's not evidence, it's speculation. Nothing's been proven. Okay, you still should have given us a heads up. Even if I did know, I'm not sure I would have told you. You've already been reckless enough. What? <sighs> Cash gave Marilyn very clear advice about laying low and staying out of it and you both ignored okay, it. That so is... no, you don't get to lecture me about doing my job because I'm too busy cleaning up your mess. We are Science Sophie. This is Coastal News, a home and away podcast. Your weekly episode companion podcast for your favourite Aussie soap. I forgot to tell you last week, Sophie, an anecdotal story that I had for you, mainly about the Anglo-American relations and the breakdown thereof. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I, I missed a treat then. For the <laughs> <laughs> you were not expecting that, were you? That <laughs> was not, no. <laughs> mm, yeah. I, was, I was abused in the street and I can't believe I forgot to tell you about it. What? I realised after recording. Explain. And now I feel like it's been a fortnight since the incident <laughs> that I'll probably recall it way more dramatic than it was. So you ready? I'm ready. Uh, yeah, I was in Spain, mm-hmm. as always. Where else, if I'm not in Manchester? <laughs> and the, um, you know, when you're on the red eye, you know, 10 o'clock home. So you mm. have to kill a whole day before you go to the airport. So gets the coach from my my city down to Malaga which is like three and a half something hours so like that was in the morning gets to Malaga at like lunchtime and then just sort of bumming around the city having a long lunch you Mm. know going shopping you know waiting so stops at this bar on like the corner near the train station like you do when you're sort of trying to stay close to the train station Mm. sat in the sun getting your last bit of sun have a can you or two you know all's well but obviously you get mithered don't you when you're sat outside in a busy city mm. by people so I've been my we've been mithered quite a lot throughout the day for people asking for money and begging and things and you know times are hard and all the rest of it and this one guy comes over and he asks me in Spanish um for money I replied yeah. in Spanish saying I don't have any and we were sat at the table by mind you know outside a, a, mm. a cafe and then he says, oh, are you English? So we all said, yeah. So he starts speaking in English with an American accent. What? <laughs> yeah. So we're like, OK, what's this American doing? Now, bear in mind, some people who learn English end up with an American accent, don't they? You know, because yeah. they know learn it so- from American. Yeah, I know someone who's got a Scottish accent because they learned English in Scotland. <laughs> God, that's a bit left field. And I think they're from Malta or somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So it could have been German or something. Do you know what I mean? But like sounded American. Yeah. So it was like giving this whole story. I've just missed my bus to Cordoba. The next one's at 7 p.m. And um, I only have 50 cents, you know, showing us this bus ticket that he could have got out of the bin. Mm-hmm. Um, showing us 50 cents in his palm and that's all. So I said, I don't have any cash. I'm really sorry, I understand your predicament. And I'm like, all along, I'm like, I've just come from where Cordoba is. Like, there's like one bus a week, let alone two a day. Do you know what I mean? What a load of rubbish. Um, And obviously, you know, we get all these chances in Manchester all the time. Mm. So I'm like, and I wasn't even lying. Like, I only, I paid with my phone and card. I know, I don't carry cash at all these days, do you? I really don't. Do you know what the cheeky stuff said? Oh, God. No worries. I'll go to the cash machine with you. I said, no, you won't. <laughs> I'll rub you blind. 
So oh, he said, no. I said, no, you won't. And he went, why? I went, because I've just said no. And he went, you fucking knobhead. And then just went ballistic in the street at me, calling me everything, or every what? expletive under the sun, the whole bar. And next bar along was looking at us, going mad, swearing, calling me effing this, effing that. I was like, I was just like, go on. I was clapping. I was like, yeah, go on. <laughs> Honestly. Oh, my yeah. God. Mm-hmm. I was like, get me on that flight home. Yeah. yeah. That was telling you to come back to England, wasn't it? Because you were probably sitting there thinking, oh, I don't want to go home and I'll yeah. stay here. And it was, a, it was the universe going, yeah, you want to go home. You mm-hmm. want to go home. Here yeah, and I thought, <laughs> he's, he's reacted like that because he knows that I know he's a chancer. Mm. I just thought, yeah, you know, if you were genuine in need, you'd have just gone, oh, really, thanks for listening. You know, see you later. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry to bother you. You know, you wouldn't have reacted like that. Anyway. There we go. Lesson learned. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Drama. Always the anyway, drama with you. <laughs> I know. I, in it. <laughs> I don't ask for it. No, you definitely don't. I've been around <laughs> you when the drama has happened and you don't ask for it. You're just there. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What happened? Uh, the day we went to London. I won't en- elaborate, but you know. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm with you now. Sorry. So bad there. How are you anyway? You okay? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Super happy that it's Friday. Whoop whoop. Yeah, yeah. And it's podcast day. Whoop whoop. Double or is it sat- it's actually Saturday now, isn't it, really? To to people listening. But um yeah, yeah it's not for us, it's Friday. Um, yeah. well we're all up to date. Yeah. Yeah, yes. What a week. Yeah. What a week. Ups and downs. Hmm. Yes, no. <laughs> we 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 did think that this week would be a bit flatter compared to the last few weeks that have been a bit mad, didn't we? And I feel like it has been. There's been a couple of episodes that have got my attention, and a couple that I'm. You may have to fill the blanks in because I started to glaze over a little bit. I don't know about you. No, I think I slept during tonight. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, fair enough. Woke up when someone closed a door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, yeah, and vice versa. You fill mm. me in. Um, <laughs> yeah, not in the way that Xander will. <laughs> I'm not no, like that. I can't even go there. I'm not like that. I'm oh, only dear. on the second V now. Do you want your headlines? Let's move on. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. The bomb aftermath has serious consequences for both John and Rue. Mm-hmm. Mm. Flick and Tane struggle with the next steps after her assault. Andrew believes he's putting others at risk by staying in the bay. And Lyric are going to make that album anyway. Please take the time to like, subscribe and review Coastal News wherever you source your podcasts and ensure you never miss an episode. Right, if you'll remember, there was a huge explosion. How can you forget? What? And Rue, <laughs> <laughs> Rue, she's on that ventilator. She's got pressure on the spinal cord. This looks serious, doesn't it? Mm. She's, you know, she's not in a good way. And you know it's serious when they're being sent to the city. Yes. You know, like... By helicopter. Yeah. Well, I think I'd say, do you know what? This breeze not not up to it, is she? <laughs> not up to it. Because if that was Tory, she'd have had that drill out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that hand she'd, drill. She'd have been in that skull. <laughs> she'd have been in her spine. Drilling it out, drilling, drilling out the compression, whatever it was. I have no idea. Did they say it was something in her neck? Or I can't, something trapped. I've written like, it. Something, there's just pressure on her spine. Yeah, something at mm. her neck and then there's pressure on the spinal cord. Mm. Um, and I mean, I don't know why that means she's incubated though, is it? I don't know. I don't get it. I don't honestly don't understand what's wrong with Rue, but I'm kind of just glad she's not here for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> a back injury does make sense because she was fleeing the van, so the explosion would have happened behind her. And she her did. her legs are 
uh, numb, aren't they? She can't oh, feel. Yeah. Her, so the, it's obviously her back because she can't feel from the waist down, and there's something yeah. wrong with her neck and her spine. I get that bit, but like you, why is she in a coma? I don't get that bit. Yeah, I don't. Um, I yeah, don't get it. She'll be running mm. a marathon by Christmas. Just you watch. Yeah. Marathon by Christmas. Now, John, he was also in surgery. You know, he was sent down because, you know, things, you know, however, he came back from it and he looked like he was going to be re, you know, everything mm. all good. Kirby, very apologetic, you know, when she found out. I mean, mm. what difference does it make? I was just thinking. And, and, um, Mar- Marilyn's at the hospital. She's frantic, you know, and she's vowing as Rue is being airlifted off to the city, you know, to find whoever did this. And you're just thinking, Fighting talk, Marilyn, got all this happening in the first place. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. let's just dial it back a bit, girl. I'm yeah. a bit, I'm on the defence. I'm not, out of character is a bit strong. I don't think it's totally out of character for Marilyn, but she's definitely sort of doing and saying things I wouldn't have expected Marilyn to say sort of 12, 18 months ago. But nowadays, I'm not sure. Mm, I know. Does that make any I, sense? I, it does. I feel like it's the same way with Kirby. I feel like Kirby's personality is completely different to the one that she had when she first came to the bay. I yeah, I don't really understand. This whole storyline has been a bit nuts. Like this studying organics thing. It's almost like it started out as one storyline with a with a path, and then the, at some point the path decided to get changed, and it's just gone. Do you think? Yeah. It just yeah. doesn't feel like. I don't know, if you sat down and wrote this storyline, I don't know whether you'd start with Marilyn needs some money, she's basically going to be an Avon lady selling, you know, products to people in this pyramid scheme. And then, you know, she they turn out to be dodgy products. I can see that I can see that bit. Like you'd say, all oh, the dodgy products and Rue has the allergic reaction and that kind of thing. I kind of got it up till that point. But since that point, it's just gone mad. It's like someone else picked it up and went, okay, and then they retaliate and then there's a bomb and I'm like how did we get I don't feel like this yeah. storyline was written in just one go went nuts. yeah it's yeah it just sort of went nuts and went its own way and yeah. and the whole wedding the wedding's been completely forgotten about hasn't it yeah really when is the wedding yeah <laughs> where's our invite but anyway <laughs> I know yeah we we scrub up well we do I'm confused. I'm just confused about this. It just feels like someone said, yeah, so she gets the products, they're crap because it's a pyramid scheme. Rue gets an allergic reaction. And then what do we do then? Where does it go? And then someone else went, oh, how about the CEO goes insane and sends them a bomb? I just don't feel like... I I feel like at some point this storyline went off the rails entirely. I'm still waiting for it not to be the CEO, though, but I am losing faith as the days go by. It's got to be yeah. because we were just told tonight that he's been arrested and banged to rights and basically judge, judge jury, and executioner. <laughs> Rose was like, yeah, I got him. He's going down forever. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Is that the end then? Are we I, believing it? I don't know. This is why he's I don't been really making understand. bombs at the motel. <laughs> well, I was going to say to you, if he's been staying at that dodgy motel, you know, if you have to learn to make a bomb anywhere, it's got to be there, isn't it? <laughs> 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 the amount of riffraff and criminals and God knows who else that stay there. He must have picked it up off someone. <laughs> uh, nobody thought to uh, look there. <laughs> <laughs> it's mad. This storyline is just mad. I mean, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it because it's Marilyn. Yeah. But, but it's the weirdest storyline. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Um, and just, you were saying this last week, I can't remember if it was first look or it was on the episode. You know that whole soap trait where you think someone's really going to be really well. We'll talk yeah. about John and Rue. Rue was coming out worse and John was looking like he was going to be okay. Mm. John then, as you predicted, takes <sighs> the big old turn for the worse. Um Don't. It's, it's traumatised me. It traumatised mm. me. I, I was hysterical during this episode. It was wasn't awful. expecting it. No, I Even though you either. told me it would probably happen. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we had a look at First Look last week, didn't we? we? I think, did you read out a line that said, John's not out of the woods yet or something? And we thought, something okay, like, here we yeah, yeah. something happening. I didn't see this happening, though. This was... This is quite awful. It makes it hard, isn't it? And I'm thinking, we've got history here. He had a stroke, do you remember? That yeah. wasn't that long ago. Didn't he have a heart attack? I thought he had yeah. a heart attack. 
He had the whole slumpy. Oh, he had the stroke as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. It's it, not mm. long. That that wasn't that long ago, was it? Really? Or am no. I just the years creeping by here? Um, mm. Breeze called in. Now she's administering the impending doom, which was <laughs> frightening. It was frightening. No wonder I had to confirm I was over 16. Yeah. I th- I just found this whole debacle stressful. She's, you know, your heart's going to feel like it's stopping. Johnny's absolutely hysterical writhing around the bed. Mm. Irene's, I think Irene's heart nearly stopped and all. Irene was um, white as a sheet. Irene looked like me when I was watching it. I was like, oh. <laughs> It was very well done, though. I mean, it was it was yeah. genuinely quite terrifying. And, you know, I think Shane did a brilliant job of that scene because I really was about to cry. <laughs> he did. But... Yeah, I was a bit upset about it. And it, John has become a huge fan favourite. Mm. Miles from the John that arrived in the Bay sort of some yeah. 15 years ago or whatever. Um, you know, he's... He's the new one. He's the better one. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Alpha or John. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but John is, is everyone is a lovable, lovable rogue, isn't he? You know what I mean? Mm. Like he's 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 a cheeky chap and he brings the the light stuff that we all crave a lot of the time during all yeah. this madness. So yeah. to see him in peril and in pain and and grave danger really like potentially mm. losing him was really was really upsetting mm. and then it but even even on worse than that for me because oh, like if he was gonna die <laughs> so if he was <laughs> gonna, gonna do it if he was gonna die <laughs> we'd have known about it and we could have prepped however yeah. so i mm. thought he's not gonna die um but it leads to this scene where you know oh. it, the impending doom's done. He's out of the woods and he's having that chat with Irene. And it was the mm. most gorgeous scene. Um, and then he says, I miss the company. You know, if I died today, I would have died a lonely man. Oh. There's got to be more to life. Chasing yeah. down every temporary <laughs> You're singing already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. Um, this, this, I we actually texted about this, didn't we? Because it broke our mm. hearts. Because we've been saying for God, best part of a year now, I think, since John started dipping his hand in his pocket and buying everybody a dinner at Salt whenever he can. We've been saying for ages that he's lonely, that he's rattling around his place on his own, and yeah. basically he pays for people to come and have dinner with him in Salt because he doesn't want to go home and sit in a house on his own. We've been saying that for about a year, haven't we? We have, yeah. We actually predicted a full-blown loneliness storyline, didn't we? we did. Which I think would yeah. have been fan- fabulous for John, actually, because mm. we'd have been weeping night after night <laughs> watching it. Yeah. But also, it's a real issue in the world. Yeah. It is, yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm glad. And I'm glad it's been addressed. Actually, I'm mm. so even as heartbreaking as it was for you and I, as massive Team John fans. Um, I'm glad it. I'm glad it. I'm glad we got that scene because mm. it is sad, you know. It and John, sad, yeah. And and now and I'm now I'm now like going about my daily life thinking John's John is lonely, you know. <laughs> There's John's out there. (laughs) He's making me sad. You're you're about to get me on a plane. I'm about to get on a plane to Sydney and go and take him out for dinner because you're making me feel sad because I can't can't stand it. I told you, it's my Achilles heel. Older people on their own feeling sad. Those Salvation Army adverts make me cry my eyes out. I can't handle them. Come on, I've got Skyscanner here on a tab. (laughs) Let's go. Let's go, Sydney. Let's go. We're doing it. We're doing it. Um, Maz is beside herself, but is sort of still going to work and chilling mm. out. It's Irene that's a day and night. She's at his bedside. Like, what a friend, man. Mm. I imagine that, you know, if I had a heart attack, would you do that? Absolutely. Recording the past. I've been reading out first look to you. <laughs> and then, <laughs> Sander gets a home run. <laughs> what could that mean? <laughs> I don't know, I'm having an heart attack. (laughs) (laughs) 
Now, oh, all dear. this has got Kirby and Maz talking like, oh, poor people, poor this, poor that. You know, we shouldn't have done what we did. We went too hard on the socials. Mm. And Kirby sort of get that fire in her belly that made them sort of go mad on the socials anyway. Again, mm. we've been taught, we've spoken loads about Kirby being the driving force, really, because Maz is just sort of, she's so naive. She'd gone along with things half the time, you know, to yeah. be rather than stand up for herself. Um, and Kirby then gets a bit of a bean up on it about the police going too slow. Mm. There's then, Coastal News Claxon, there's then this <laughs> front page spread that mm. with, about the whole event. That, why would it? I mean, of course, a massive explosion would be a front page yeah. spread bomb in the in a sleepy town. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, that reveals basically that the CEO was never on holiday, mm. never MIA. He was he was let go. Me, you know, and that Kirby's mad about this. She's really upset, and um, all this Marilyn's saying things like all this pain and suffering is caused by us, blah blah blah. But she's like, no, the police are not being good enough. The police mm. are not pulling the finger out. Why are we finding information out from the paper? She's trying to get hold of Rose all day. Rose is ignoring her calls. Mm. Um, has time for breakfast, lunch and dinner wherever she is though and um, <laughs> ultimately this leads to Rose going round there because Marilyn's like Rose has been trying to call you all day like is it about the paper because Rose hasn't seen the coastal news that day so mm. off Rose goes round to Kirby's and she gets a right laying into how mm. dare you not inform us how dare you not keep us up to date how are we finding out from the newspaper? It is not good enough. And Rose doesn't have to give her a serving, does she? Mm, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed it. Because I was like, go on, Rose. Because I was. You know, Kirby's, you know, she's got a lot of lot, lot to say about a lot of things lately. I'm, I'm really going off her. Um, you know, she's having a go at Theo. Oh, you dumped me, blah, blah, blah. And I don't, I don't agree with that scenario either. And now mm. she's just hate, hating the world. She's she's lost the ability to self-reflect, which she used to have, and she's just going, oh, you're not doing your job properly. Oh. And it's like, no, you you went to the police station two or three times. You were told two or three times, how about you stop provoking them, and then you won't stop. You know, you won't get threats anymore, and it won't escalate. They yeah. were told. They were told. Yeah. And Rose says mm. that. You know, yeah. you were told to stop and you didn't. And thanks yeah. to, don't you dare, Pat, you know, come to me and tell me how to do my job when I have spent nothing but clean up your mess. And I just went, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I actually clapped. I stood up and clapped. Because <laughs> I waited. <laughs> it's <laughs> I thought, that's the first time Rose has ever sounded like a policewoman as well. I know. Yeah, she actually, apart from the stunt that she pulled in the car with the siren, which was funny, you know, when she put she put the siren on so she couldn't hear her talking, that was funny. But it was childish and it wasn't a police officer type thing. But this was, this was back down lady. Also, why is Kirby ringing it? I know they're friends. I get that. They're friends. But she's not her personal police, you know, officer that she can call know, yeah. at any yeah. point in the day. And uh, leaving her voicemails going, ring me back. She's working. This is yeah, I thought that, that was strange. On. Yeah, if you want an update, go down to YCPD yourself. Yeah, don't right, just this. ring your mate. She's not your personal police officer for, you know, personal emergencies. I was really annoyed with her. I think she's become really, really entitled and irritating lately. I've really gone off her. Oh. Really gone off Sophie her. Sophie doesn't like a lyric. <laughs> <laughs> she was my least favourite lyric for the last year she's been my least favorite of the lot of them and and now i'm like she can take her keyboard and bugger off to be honest rack off woman yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) no i i concur um i think she's handled this way and i think she's dragging maz's name through it Mm. as well which is what's bugging me because if if we think about this whole debacle if Mm. if Kirby wasn't involved, it wouldn't have gone mad online. It just wouldn't. No. She wouldn't have been doing the interviews. She wouldn't The boxes be... would still be coming to Marilyn and she'd still be putting yeah. them in the spare room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, God. Yeah. Nightmare. Absolute nightmare. Um, and they, they make amends anyway, don't they, in the end? Um, that was funny, that scene where Rose goes, gets out of the police car to get a coffee tonight. Yeah. <laughs> it runs off. Puts the, siren puts the on. siren on so she can't hear her. Mm, um, it was funny, but it was still really, really childish. 
Yeah, of um, course. Because, like you say, she's a copper, but she doesn't bloody act like one most of the time, does she? Not believable, is it? If she if she came no. to him and was like, stick them up, you'd be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> stick this. <laughs> <laughs> you would, but you can't take her seriously. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, mm. she stood up to her. Good on her. Anyway. Um, and th- seemingly they've solved the crime, haven't they? Like you say, because they've arrested the CEO mm. down at Travel Dodge. But <laughs> I don't know. I wanted it to be somewhat better than that. You know, it, it was so weird. Like, if you went to the loo during that scene, you wouldn't have heard the end of the story because it was literally she came in the diner and went, yeah, we've got him. He's going down for a long time if I can help it. And that was it. And I was like, what? <laughs> So you've got all the evidence in. Well, they've only been. She's only been gone an hour. She's got all the evidence. Yeah. She's got the CEO. He's banged to rights. He's going down. Magistrates tomorrow. Yeah. It's insane. Insane. Alf weren't happy, were we? Well, I, I don't really blame him because everyone was kind of partying, weren't they? And going, oh yeah, it's over. And I was thinking, his daughter's still in in a coma. Like mm-hmm. maybe we should tone it down. Mm-hmm. Maybe we should dial back. And it's Marilyn saying that. <laughs> it's all behind us. Like, yeah, but yeah. Rue's like being kept alive on a machine. I can't really blame Maz for that, to be honest, because as much as, yeah, as much as Marilyn and Rue were meant to be bezies, I don't really oh, believe that, it. Oh, honestly, that made me sick as well this week. Oh, my best friend. I've done this to my best friend. I'm like, what friend? Mm, yeah. Really? Really? The way yeah. she's been. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Let's see. Um, it's bang to rights. End of end of that chapter. Apparently. End of the stunning organics chapter. <laughs> now, someone chapter who's not ending is poor old Flix. She mm. doesn't want to talk, does she? She just wants to swim. And she's in the pool. <clears throat> Tane tries. She's not having a bar of it. She's just sort of swimming away. So he gets in the pool with her. <laughs> <laughs> and um, now she's jumping on him and she, she's making advances you know mm. he's a bit hesitant and then this cause is a bit of a thing and he mm. you know she she then goes off in a huff um, and I say a huff that makes it sound a bit flippant but she sort of takes umbrage at the fact that he's dismissed her advances mm. um, and if it's that much of an issue don't worry about it you know and actually behind that I'm calling it a huff, but, you know, that's making it sound flippant. Behind it is her feeling rejected. She's mm. sort of going to him, wanting to be wanted still. Is she testing him, sort of, will he, you know, can he still touch me? Can he still be intimate with me after what's happened? Is it a test? Is it is it her trying to forget and suppress the horrible assault and try and feel normal consensual yeah like yeah. what's your take on what's going on with flick in that moment um it could be either of those things couldn't it It could be that you know she wants to see if anything's changed between them or it could legitimately be that she's just trying to blank it out you know it's almost like she's trying to erase what happened and just go right that didn't happen we're fine let's sleep together sleeping together will fix everything because you know if they haven't slept together since then you know the first time they do sleep together is going to be a big deal and um, Mm. I guess I guess she's trying to rip the plaster off and get it over with but it's I think she's just I think she's trying to avoid the breakdown isn't she yeah and do anything but yeah yeah. I think she's trying to run before she can walk me yeah I think she's she's uh she's trying to think I want to skip the like you say, mm. the breakdown, all the crap before. I want to get to the better bit, you know, yeah. and ignore the fact that yeah. I need to probably process it and go through the crap bit. Um, mm. <clears throat> and um, it causes real problems, you know, this rejection for him, doesn't it? Mm. You know, he's, I mean, he says it multiple times. <laughs> I want to see where you hear it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> he wants to know where her head's at. But um, yeah. Uh, uh, and and she's saying, I'm telling you, this is you know, is this not is this not showing you where my head's at? I want to I want mm. to get get to it, you know. Um, but I think he knows, doesn't he? That this is her sticking a barrier up and not really yeah. dealing with it. So he knows it's not really where her head's at. Her head is mm. actually someplace else, much messier. 
he's yeah. going to work and she's telling him you need to get on board if you mm-hmm. want things to be normal get on board that'd be mm-hmm. great and off she goes to work and at work she's the same obviously not coming on to people and trying to trying to get them in the sack but like at work she's throwing Kirby's wine out because she left it unattended for a minute she's announcing to the patrons of salt that they can only buy their own drinks no one's yeah. shouting anybody a drink which is a ridiculous ru- well it's not a ridiculous rule but it seems a bit over overzealous for that type of environment and every you know very out of ordinary mm. mac then obviously swiftly learns what's going on and he's absolutely beside herself and just t- trying to get her to go home and trying to trying to get mm. her to even just sit for a minute and she's going through the same motions with Max. So it's not just a Tane thing, is it? She's no. doing this, she's doing this in all settings with all people, this this avoidance mechanism yeah. that she's doing. Yeah. Because we're not long since the last breakdown, are we, really? When she was, you know, airing cupboard booze, that whole yeah. thing. It's not that mm. long ago, really. So mm. I guess they're trying to do a different thing. So they could have just put her straight back where she was, drinking booze out the airing cupboard all day and, you know, running off to a caravan and staying there. They could have done that. But I think they're trying to do something different with her. So yeah. we've ended up up here, I think. And I think... I think she's just not thinking properly because if she thought about it logically, like Tani, Tani can't do right for doing wrong. I mean, imagine if he if it was the other way around and he was coming on to her and he was trying it on with her. We'd all be screaming at the TV. She's just been sexually assaulted, Tani. Put her down. Do you know what I mean? It would yeah. be, it would be yeah. horrendous if he was trying to get her into bed at this point. So he's he's obviously very wary of that. And taking it uh-huh. at that pace and just making sure, you know, is it are you okay before we go and do that again? Because Which I think is just as valid as her feelings. Yeah, as well. it is. Yeah. It is. Because yeah. ima- imagine if they do go and sleep together and then it brings it all back for her and it traumatizes her even more. Like he's probably thinking that. Mm-hmm. It's just, I, don't, I agree. It's really I think difficult. I messaged you, didn't I, saying, tell me if I'm out of line, but mm. I feel like she ought to really consider that he is affected as well the effects Mm. on him are very very different of course yes yeah directly happen to him but like i'm trying to put myself in tiny issues a bit and think this has happened to him as well really Mm. but not directly obviously but like his relationship with her has been changed forever because she will change as a result of this happening to her yeah um and there's no changing that and we've all, everyone's got to deal with it and everyone's got to try and i don't know i just feel like two days later she's trying mm-hmm. to get him to forget it's happened and i don't think it's something that you could do and i wouldn't be able to if no. i was tiny either you know no no you wouldn't this has happened to somebody that you love and that you're married and then you know like we talked about last week on the pod he wasn't there he feels that guilt as well that he guilt. yeah he wasn't at battle of the bands because he just got back to australia after dealing with that all that drama from the car who stuff so you know he wasn't there to protect her which will be killing him because he's very protective of his family and you know, he wasn't there to, to help. So oh, it's just horrendous. <laughs> There's it no is. right or wrong is, with, with this. I, I just, I feel for both of them. Um, but we are delaying the, the inevitable, really, by just trying to sweep it under the carpet, aren't we? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, he does finally get her out of work and gets her back mm. home. And she advances again. She knows yeah. she, she jumps on him again. He says no we're not doing this and she throws him out so they, they do this sort of toy for days and days don't they um mm-hmm. and she's even saying things like you can't touch me you find me disgusting because somebody else has had their hands on me you can't you know you can't go there um and he, he actually turns to Brie for some advice mm-hmm. which I thought was an interesting take actually because I didn't expect Tani to ever sort of do that really he's sort of a man who solves a problem you know mm. head on isn't he really but I don't I think he's sort of not an eggshell but he's worried that he might do say the wrong thing and make things worse yeah um and she says a counsellor might be a good idea um and you know her reactions are valid you just have to go through this you know mm. which mm. I thought was great advice um be there for it go through it um and 
you know, see where see what happens. Eden does a lot of work as well because Eden Eden's been great since since the night actually. Yeah. Um, and obviously catches up with her uh, in another scene and sort of shares Flick shares her concerns with Flick, which I think got it off a chest to someone impartial out of the relationship. Mm. Um, you know, about he can't touch me, you know, what if we can't get past this? Our marriage might be over. And thankfully it didn't blow into a big I can't believe you told him situation because mm. that would have really bugged me. But Eden tells Tani immediately, look, this mm. is where her head's at. You wanted to know, and I'm thinking, yes, you needed to know what she was thinking, and yeah. she's not told him. Thank God Eden did, you know. Mm. And he go he meets up with her, doesn't he? And he says I cannot watch you self-destruct again. It will mm. ruin our marriage. Like, mm. we're going to do things differently this time. And mm. that opens the dialogue between the two of them. And I thought, thank God that happened. Thank God. And it, she ends up apologising later. And even mm. though she's nothing to apologise for, I thought, how big, how, what a difference mm. she is now to where she was last time. Yeah, she's come a long way, hasn't she? Because I think she was trying to... I think she was running scared. I think she was running scared because she she did think this was going to ruin the marriage. And she was trying to blame him for that, you know, preempt it and say, mm. this this marriage is ruined because, you, you know, you don't fancy me anymore. You don't look at me the same anymore. You won't touch me, etc. So she was trying to put it in his corner and say, oh, it's not going to work because you don't want to touch me anymore. But then he's he's turned it round on her, hasn't he, by saying, actually, that's not going to break us. That's not what's going to end the marriage. What's going to end our marriage is if you, you self-destruct again. And yeah. we have to go, go through all that that we've just been through. You know, we're just picking up the pieces from last time. We can't do it again. We can't have you like running off and living in a caravan and getting drunk every day. It's not going to work. So I think yeah. it's... I think we needed this because I was honestly really scared that we were going to just go back six months and we were going to have to watch all that again because I just, I'm not strong enough <laughs> to do it myself. Yeah, I was yeah. the same. I was feeling yeah. the same. So that relief you're describing, I had the exact same thing. Mm. Um, and I think as character development goes, that was really poignant, but yeah. actually really, really required. Yes. From Flick, you know, as, yeah. as a sort of develop you know and a really a, a pivotal moment really in her development as a character mm. uh, since she arrived in the shores of the bay <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> uh, what's up with me today uh, <laughs> coming out with all sorts of rubbish right <laughs> the violin vixen as i'm calling um, her <laughs> she's hanging about like a fart in a lift she is say. isn't she and eden mm. basically told her that didn't she <laughs> What are you still doing here? Get lost. Rack off. We've done that. Playing your violin when, right outside your bedroom window. <laughs> oh, God. I thank God John's in hospital because if not, that would have killed him. <sighs> Imagine. Imagine. <laughs> um, I mean, Eden, she's saying what's on all our lips, you know, and what's mm. on all our minds. What is she going on? And then there's this weird, honestly, I'm really concerned about Remy here. Like, he is a man who he knows. Right, he knows she's sticking out. There's been these weird. We, you and I were calling her a bit of a, bit of a, a bit of a sort, weren't we? Last week, saying she's that type of girl who wants it something now she can't have it. Mm. We feel like she was going to make a move, and I'm still feeling a bit like that, even though her making amends with Eden over the course of these couple of scenes. Um, I say amends, but sort of a truce, I'll call it. Mm. And her resulting in her deciding not to sleep on a sofa. Um, even though that sounded a bit more positive and she took that step to move out, I was thinking, this girl is going to stay in this house and wind the heck up, wind Brie up like no one's business. Mm. And like, I'm just thinking, what, what, is, what is Remy playing at? Like, what has I, this I girl got on him? I think he's completely blind to it. You know what? You know what you just said about he knows. He knows. I think he does know. Gen. I think if it was any other female, or male, even anybody else was cracking onto him like this, or all these little looks that we keep seeing that she gives him, I just think he's completely oblivious because to him, she's in the friend zone. He's not even mm -hmm. con contemplating it. He doesn't see it. He's in love with Bree. He can't see any anything else, any other possibility with Mercedes. I genuinely believe that he doesn't 
see it. Do you? But, yeah, I do. I think he's aware of me. Do you? I think he's aware, but because he's friends with her, he doesn't see it as a problem. Because he knows in himself he mm. won't do it. Yeah, maybe. But I don't know. I think I think he, he might only be that one one too many beers away from something. It's some going to have to go somewhere. It's going to have to because it's been teased too much. And the fact that she hasn't booked off yet tells me that something's coming because... Something's, yeah. I'm not being funny, but... Okay, so they didn't get... They, they got through to the final battle of the bands. Brilliant. But they couldn't go through with it because obviously what happened with Flick, they decided to pull out. I think at this point, if I was Mercedes, with everything that's going on, with their friend who's also Eden's boyfriend's sister I think I'd mm. have backed out I think I'd have gone and said look it was great to do the Battle of the Bands with you I'm really sorry that we you know we couldn't finish it I'd I'd step away I'd do the classy thing and just leave now because they don't actually need her anymore and she's just hanging around like you say like a fart in a lift so she should have just walked away but the fact that she's hanging around the fact that she's not leaving she's made this big announcement that she's going to go and find a place to stay so she's obviously going to stick around in the bay and she wants to do this album and everything else with them. There's got to be yeah. something. It's not just about the album. It's got to be about Remy, hasn't it? It's got to be. Yeah. That's the excuse to stay around. I'll record your album yeah. with you. And Remy's yeah. like, oh, yeah, like, you know, puppy eyes. Like, mm. yeah. They don't need her. Um, they don't need her. For, I know they keep saying, oh, we sound great with you and we smashed it. And I'm like, no, it sounded absolutely dreadful with her. What you need <laughs> is, is a drummer. Not being funny, Lyric. You don't need a violin. You need a drum kit. But anyway, <laughs> if you think the violin's amazing, wow! Wait till you hear drums. But uh, <laughs> I just, I don't believe, I don't believe that she's sticking around for the album. I believe that we are suffering her a bit longer until the inevitable. She kisses Remy. We, we, <laughs> who's we? Bree walks in, sees it explodes that's another week of drama and then eventually mercedes will yeah. go away with a tail between her legs and that'll yeah. be it it's All gotta, be, it's gotta yeah. be i'm calling it put it in the book it's gotta happen put it in the book it's in the little black book and we'll pull that out when it happens <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> justin's out of hospital as well um yeah. in the other leg brace Mm-hmm. Uh, recovery <laughs> begins. Yeah. And swiftly Leah's on to Andrew. Like I want him mm. to move in. Um so Theo brings him back to the bay. He's been interviewed by the DPP. It's been a bit stressful. He's been told about his mum now. We were, were questioning mm. what the new work with last week. Like, just yeah. you know, where are we up to with that? Um, but he's actually more worried about, he's probably <laughs> grieved his mum before he even knew any of that, you know. Yeah. He's more worried about the cult being out. They're out and about. Mm. Like Margot mm. and which which other one is it who's in, in remand? I think Baldy's the one that shot Justin, isn't he? So I think he's in remand. Can't remember his name. Crossbow. Mm. Crossbow Baldy. Baldy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the rest free to roam, and Andrew's a bit concerned about this. He doesn't think this is the end. Mm. Um, you know, he's worried for everybody's safety. He doesn't think he should be at their house. He's going to think he's going to bring trouble there. And I'm thinking, guys, you better listen because if anyone knows anything, it's going to be Andrew, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Mm. He knows how these people operate. He's been brought up in it. Mm. Like, he's going to know how, the, you know, if he's saying they're going to come back. They're going to bloody come back. And then yeah. I'm thinking, and I've watched Dome Away long enough to think they will bring a big bad cult back when we least expect mm. They will do. Yeah. Do you reckon it'll be <laughs> another end of season type scenario? Or... Well, that would only be a few months away. Mm. So it's definitely, definitely plausible. Yeah. Um, and, well, for us, it UK season finale anyway. Um mm. And then there's these, you know, worrying scenes. Theo's like, um, Theo's trying to take him under his wing, isn't he? Which you and I both love. We've talked about this. Mm-hmm. Theo coming from a place of his own sort of parental abuse. Um, and, you know, he's there really fostered, I suppose, unofficially. He's there, yeah. isn't he, lodging? He's too um, old to be he, fostered. <laughs> well, yeah, but he's, he's sort of their adoptive yeah. family yeah. member. Yeah. Um, and he, they've sort of made their own family, haven't they? Um, mm-hmm. And 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 it'd be nice if Andrew could join it. Now he wakes up in the night for a bottle of water and he stumbles upon Andrew staring at a knife, sitting there wide awake, guarding the house. I suppose I don't know, waiting for someone to come. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, he said he was expecting to be punished 
for everything, which I thought was quite sad. Mm, yeah, it was sad, actually. Yeah, because he said, oh, they're going to come back and they're going to punish me. And that's, that's all he's known, isn't it? He's only ever known, like, follow the rules or, you know, you have to flip a tyre over a hundred times or whatever or be locked in the metal room or he's only ever known horrible things happen. Yeah, it's and really I'm struggling. Sad. It is really sad. And I'm struggling with this whole, we think the world's going to end, so we're going to hunker down. Mm. And also, we're going to do a few murders. Yes. You know, like, what's the link there? Why we're murdering people? I don't understand the, the cult at all. I don't, yeah. Why was Andrew's dad in the house? Why did they kill his mom? There's loads of unfinished business here that we don't, as an audience, don't know. Mm. It doesn't make sense, I'll be honest, but... It doesn't. This cult. I can get on board with the whole end of the world thing. People are like that, aren't they? Doomsday is and all that. Like, yeah. fair enough. Like, build a bunker and go and live in it and live off the land or whatever you need to do. Like, mm. fair enough. You know, stock upon them baked beans. I mean, he loves a baked bean. <laughs> Andrew. He does. <laughs> um, you know, no running because he was in that house with no running water, no provisions, wasn't he? Like, if that's mm. how you want to live, fine. Yeah. But like why are you why are you killing people and putting their bodies in suitcases and mm. like what why does it need to be dangerous? I don't I, I don't know why they're like they are in that respect. And I need to know. Um and I mean Andrew's obviously scared of it. The next day he's gone and the mm. night's gone as well, you know, and tin of beans and he's packed up and he's he's, <laughs> he's not gone far, he's gone to the beach for a think. St- I told you, whenever you've got things on your mind, you go and stare at the sea. <laughs> yep. That's what you've got to do. It's the first place you look. So Theo finds him quite quickly. Um, and he says, you know, I'm, you know, I'm really, you know, I'm sorry, but I'm leaving. It's the only way I can keep you all safe. And I'm thinking, why has this poor lad got this burden on his shoulders or feels like he's got this burden mm. when he's the one really that needs needs the help? You know, yeah. and he reluctantly does go back in the end to the Morgan house, hands the knife back over. And Justin has this bright idea uh, to call Rose over and try and sort of, can we get some charges on these guys? No, he's eavesdropping, isn't he? You know, mm-hmm. and, and Rose has got to sort of say, I can't guarantee your safety. There's people out there who want you. You know, I, I've got nothing to arrest them on. So, like, you know, if they're out there, they're out there, you know. Mm-hmm. And this doesn't help Andrew at all. So what does Justin do? He goes and buys Amazon CCTV on the old <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> Next day delivery. Oh, I'm thinking. Dear. <laughs> yeah, it's starting, it's starting to look like the compound again now, though, isn't it? That's what I was thinking. He's t- turned it into oh, yeah. a little mini Vita Nova. That's true. It's and Andrew's it's... obsessed with it, isn't he? He won't move yeah. off that laptop. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's helping him, but... Leah does mention that, actually. Is this is all this a bit too... You know, anxiety inducing. And he's mm. like, no, no, he needs this for, you know, and he's he's like running out. And I'm just all the while I'm thinking, cameras, you want to try locking your door, love? Let's <laughs> start with the basics. <laughs> that would help. That would help. Or like, I don't know. So this cult, this dangerous cult, most members are out on this side of the fence. Margot's in behind the bars. But she can mm. still pull some strings, can't she, from jail? So, of course she like, can. Yeah. Like you say, at any time, and probably will in the future, at any time, anybody can come back and retaliate. You know, they've. That she was saying, "You've undone decades of work. You know, that we've been working too." So, they're really angry about this. They haven't. They're probably, presumably, going to have to start from scratch if they still believe that the world's going to end and they need to be doomsday prepping and all that stuff. They're going to have to start over again. The rest of the cult without Margot. Yeah. So they're going to be furious that they've been set back and all of that sort of stuff, aren't they? So logically, they know where they know where Andrew is. They know where Justin is. They know their names. They know where they live. Is is a CCTV the right thing to do? I don't know. What, what would you do? I think I'd move house. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I think I'd move, but just as know. like, oh god, not witness protection again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, this is why these these kind of storylines are great because they're you know they're big and they're dramatic and they're exciting. But when they end like this, there's always going to be that loose end. There's always going to yeah, be how do you things... tie it up? Yeah. yeah. 
And yeah. if it was real life, you know, and you had been threatened and what have you, you would move, wouldn't you? You wouldn't stick around in the bay for them to just turn up at any point. So you wouldn't put cameras up and just sit there like a, you know, sitting duck waiting for them to come and shoot you in the leg again. I don't, I don't know where we go with this. I don't know how Andrew gets to feel safe. I don't think the cameras are going to get in there, but I don't know what will. I agree. So we'll have to, well, I suppose we'll just have to see, won't we? See what happens yeah. and see how long it takes them to come looking for him because he's yeah. adamant they will. He's adamant, isn't he? Yeah. But we'll, uh, so we'll just have to see. But yeah, I agree. I, in, yeah. It, 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 they're really just sitting waiting for the inevitable, really, <laughs> yeah. um, because they know everything about them. And he's just sitting there. I can't see them letting him move in with them. No, he's he's privy to things that they don't want out there. So no. um, I can't see him them letting him stay there. No. Do we want to talk about grief kiss? Oh. I, I, think <laughs> it's, I think it's grief sex now. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Second base, After... second base, blown out. I think Friday. I think it was a home run on Friday's episode <laughs> at the end. What is he mm. playing at? I don't know. It's making me cringe. I don't. I don't get it. I, I mean, I, I'm speechless about this whole thing. I mean, <laughs> it's mind numbing. It's so I'm boring. Like, we it's don't so even boring. know this person. I know. Like, it's so boring, but it's also so cringeworthy because it's like, okay. <laughs> I don't really, I feel bad for her. I feel bad that, you know, if for people in that situation, I feel bad. I feel empathetic for them. I think it's awful what she's been through. She that She's lost her husband and then, you know, in, in really violent, horrendous circumstances as well, young, they've not been together that long. She's also lost access to her stepson, which is like, you know, her only link to him, her only link to his family. She's lost that as well. So I get, I get where she's coming from. I get why she's so sad and it's horrendous. I don't wish that on anybody. But I don't know her from Adam. I don't know her from Adam. So no. I, I don't really feel that invested in her storyline. And I don't feel that... I don't want to see this. I don't want to see. And Xander's a bit awkward to watch. Yeah, it's really cringy. And she's just like... It's so, it's so fast. It's like a trauma bond between the pair of them. Because she's just like, you're the best thing in my life right now. And I'm like, oh God, yes, but your life is so shit that anything... <laughs> would seem good right and like now. Matt and Max seems to have sort of stopped warning him yeah I know I know I know she promised to lay off but like now he's kissed her I'd be like this is what I was like why is Matt not saying this is what I was telling you about yeah like this is not too far this is not know. good it's I can't good. be asked with and it. I just I don't really I, I feel bad for her but at the same time she keeps saying how much she loves Jamie how much she misses him and that she's like she's upset about not having his kid around because that's his only her only link to him and stuff but then in the same breath she's like but I really like you Xander and you're the best thing in my life I'm like how much did you love Jamie oh, really if you God. can just yeah I don't really understand it I, I I'm struggling to understand why hey, she's... some friend he is I know She's been, imagine, she's just imagine slashed your on. friend doing that to you. It's horrendous. And your body's not even cold. Horrendous. Honest to God. I know. It's <laughs> awful. I just, it's making me proper cringe. Where are we going with this? You know, are they going to get together and it's going to be like, you know, the next romance of the century? Or is this going to be grief sex followed by a lot of remorse? The writing's on the wall because of the circumstances, isn't it? Yeah. This isn't going. This isn't going anywhere. It's just. It's so weird. It's so weird. It's, it feels like a Gabe thing. You know when I was saying ages ago, like we don't need Gabe. We don't mm-hmm. need this. There's no. There's no real need for this um, storyline. All he did was come in, upset Mac, and die. I feel like this is another Gabe storyline where we didn't need it. You know, Xander doesn't need another woman coming in and messes with messing with his fragile mind when he's just starting to pick up the pieces. You know, he just left that job. He just started to work at the bar, start to piece his life back together again. Because he's been traumatised for ages, Sander, hasn't he? With everything that's gone on in mm. his life. And now we've got this. And it, we didn't need this. We didn't need her to come and disrupt him, just destabilise his life. I just, I don't, why? Why are we here again? 
Why? Who knows? I feel like I'm having a breakdown over this storyline. Right, Cy, si, it's that time again. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> what you just said. Never going to be ready, but go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. It's another round of your say on the bay. Love. So, for anyone who's new here, we look at what you guys think of Home and Away this week. All the episodes that have aired on Channel 5 and 5 Star. I've been going through all your comments and, on social media, um, and we're going to have a look at some of those and, and discuss them. I'm going to read them all out to you so that you can all hear what people have been saying. Um, but before we get on with that, you already know the drill, but we're on Facebook, Instagram, Threads, YouTube. We're still on Twitter. I will not call it anything else. And we tweet along with the episode that we watch, which is 6.30pm Monday to Friday on Five Star here in the UK. Yeah. So, yeah, are you ready? Yeah, barn. So first of all, so I went to I went over to Facebook because Facebook, the Home and Away UK page on Facebook is it, it's full of comments. Normally they post lots of um, pictures, things that are coming up this week, things that have happened this week. They post reels of, of videos, clips that have happened on the show. Um, yeah. And there's, there's quite a lot of engagement on there. So I do like to have a little nosy on there. And um, there was a little conversation going on. When I say conversation. It was more like people just um just statements i guess rather than a conversation saying that home and away is better than all of our uk soaps so this is something that a lot of people were saying so mark said this show is better than all of our english soaps philip rundle said yeah i prefer home and away because the stories move along at a decent pace unlike the uk soaps mm -hmm. um and Nikki said, I may be biased as Home and Away is my favourite, but the current storylines are brilliant. Flick's story is also moving at the right pace. Her telling cash and asking for help all in the same week. I'm so pleased they didn't drag it out. So lots of people are uh -huh. sort of saying the same thing, really. That you know, A lot of people were saying, yes, I don't watch anything else anymore. I gave up on EastEnders because it was too depressing. I, you know, I dip in and out of some of the other soaps. But for me, Home and Away is the best one. So... I agree. I think, yeah, I mean, I, I do enjoy Corey, but I think if I had to sacrifice one for the other, I'd always tune in for, I'd always tune into Home and Away and I'd put Corey on yeah. catch up, on catch up. So yeah. I think I'd, I think I'd agree. Yeah. I've always loved the, I think the pace of Home and Away has always been its advantage. It's always been mm. faster. Yes. You know, let's get it done. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, but it's not ridiculously uh, fast because the reason I didn't get on with Hollyoak so much is because I could miss one episode and then have absolutely no idea what was going on because they would yeah. have such quick storylines. It was like ADHD storyline. It was like, blah, 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 blah. and then you miss a couple and then you're like, who's he? What, and why is she dead? And what the hell? Yeah. And this issue based stuff, oh, they just does so well. It does. So like, yeah, it reminds you of what great television. This is, yeah. I think I called it the best TV ever last week, really, like a year or something. Yeah, yeah, um, the best the best show we've seen this year, I think that, that mm, episode, I think mm. the, the best soap episode I've seen definitely this year. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good feedback yeah, for the show. Quite a lot of comments like that. Lots of people saying they, that Home and Away is either their only soap or it's their favourite soap, you know, and it, it beats the the UK ones. And a lot of people saying the reason why is because of the pace, the fact that, you know, it's not dragged out for absolutely ages and it's not done too quickly. Um, someone called Victoria said, I've got to say Home and Away has been really good this week. Three strong storylines playing out at present. Really enjoying it. Lots mm -hmm. of people, you know, with the praise, just generally about the show. Um, but they did post something about John. I think they posted the clip where John has the impending doom, uh, you know, minutes, which was horrendous. Um, so as you can imagine, social media not enjoying this because John, as you said on the main pod, you know, he's a really popular character. Lots of people, you know, really love John. Um, yeah. he's, I think he is one of the most popular characters on the show, if not the most popular character, because he topped our poll that we did. We did he a tear did. makeup That's poll. That's true. Yeah, he did, and everybody loved him. There was there was no, there was like five categories that you could put the characters into, and he was either really loved 
or really like and he didn't get any anything any votes lower than that so he actually was the you know the, the poll winner the most popular character that's on the show at the moment among our uh, followers so yeah and uh, the comments on social media kind of back that up so naomi said please don't kill him off kill rue off <laughs> <laughs> thanks naomi i agree <laughs> i like that comment it wasn't me i promise i wasn't masquerading as someone else it was someone called naomi um Lorraine say, <laughs> saying please don't kill John off um Vanessa saying I love John I'm so happy Bree Bree saved him he's a whiner but you've got to love his character he's a kind soul I agree with Aww. that uh Caroline said I love John he's a great character Betty's praising the acting awesome acting love home and away Donna said that was a hard watch uh another one saying great acting Clarice um and then christina saying i can't believe that aussie hospitals have only got one doctor that covers a and e and icu and then a, a laughing emoji <laughs> it's true though isn't it and no you... gowns for men <laughs> no, although, i think john did have a gown <laughs> interesting that isn't it mm. john managed to find a gown for john yeah i won't pass any comments on why but um <laughs> interesting yes they don't have one when Tani goes in, but there we go. Um, <laughs> and then lots of people commenting on... Listen, on... stop complaining. Ooh. What if somebody from the show here is listening and they're going to start putting a gown on Tani? No, it's gonna no. be a, There's going to be a mob. I'm not complaining. <laughs> I, mean, I enjoy the lack of gowns for the, for the males <laughs> with six packs. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dear mm. me. Love it. Is that... Yeah, I don't, I'm not going to say it. But anyway... <laughs> <laughs> people were also talking about the the scene with john and irene that we just talked about in the main pod where you know oh. they he's he's come round from his impending doom and she goes are you all right and he goes no i'm really not all right you know i'm really really not i thought i was gonna die and you know i thought i was gonna die a lonely man it was just horrendous so a lot of people that were pulling heartstrings again for people on social media and then it also fueled the conversation of who John should be with so if he's saying that he's lonely should he be back with Marilyn so Mark on Facebook says I hope he gets back with Marilyn but Lorraine saying mm. no I think it should be Irene so I really think these two characters should get together I think they really do care about each other Natasha's agree and she said they'd be so funny together think of the banter and Anne's agreeing as mm. well. John and Irene love to see them together. So that's fueled that storyline. Not on know. my own. Because are you? Do they still give you the ick or the thought yes. of that? Still? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not okay. there. Uh, maybe. I'll, maybe if I saw a bit more of them together, or maybe I'd come around. But at the moment, it just feels. They feel so friendly. So friend zone, brother sister. I just don't see them as romantic at all, and it does give me the yeah. ick. Yeah. Mm. yeah. No, I, I love Jireen. Jireen. See, I, John and Maz I'd be on board with. I, I also want that as well, to be fair. I, I can mind see either. that, because obviously we've we've had it before, so we know we know it's there. But I also see there's a little bit of a... There's still a little bit of a spark between them. I don't see any spark between John and Irene. I just think they'd just be together from convenience. I don't think they really would be together for all the right reason. It's companionship. It's not anything. Yeah, yeah, passion. It, no, yeah. and it doesn't. It doesn't really get me like excited then, because I'm like, well, that's just yeah. It's a bit. It's a bit weird. It's like going out with your brother. It's a bit weird. I don't know. But lots of people in, are enjoying the idea, so maybe they'll get what they want. We don't know yet, do we? We don't know. I tell you, who else is, is dividing opinion though? Another couple is Rose and Marley. Now. We've talked about Rose and Marley on, on here. Um, but some people absolutely love them and some people can't stand them. So Bavna said, I love these two. They're my current favourite couple. Um, Linda says, I like these two together. Um, Kerry says, I love Marley, but I can't stand Rose, which is it's kind of how I feel, Kerry, to be honest, I think. Well, we like them individually, don't we? But like... Mm. together we don't think it works marley's not even got out of bed this week how have people got comments about this <laughs> i don't know i think <laughs> i think there was a, a clip posted on on the socials of um, oh right yeah. being cut you know when they're on the sofa after he'd been blown up and she was like yeah you're right why won't you take any praise 
think it was yeah. that clip. Um, you're a hero. I mean, this is like... how invested I am in it. I just like get that mm. bloody tank top in the wash quick. <laughs> Obsessed with his, with his wardrobe. I <laughs> am. I can't. That's all I look at. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Mm. Um, Kerry. Yeah, Kerry said she can't stand Rose. Glynis says they make a beautiful couple. Love them. Uh, mm. Alia doesn't agree. Alia thinks that Marley should be with Mac because Mac needs a good egg like Marley. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know whether I want him with Mac either, but there we go. I don't. I don't know. Um, and then Sally is calling um, Rose and Marley the new Dean and Ziggy. What? What? I know. What? The new Dean and Ziggy. Is, it, is this because Ro- Marley was being called the new Dean when Dean left? I don't know. Might be. Oh, just... yeah, could be. But no, I'm sorry. They've got nothing. No. Is it because they always. Ziggy. Is it because they always argue? <laughs> <laughs> they argue like like Dean, Dean and Ziggy have been together for years and years and they've known each other for ages and they knew each other inside out and they argued like cat and mouse didn't they or cat and dog or whatever mm. Mm. but Rose and Marley are supposed to be in the honeymoon stage they're not supposed to be arguing like yeah I don't oh, I don't know maybe that's maybe that's the comparison we're going to have to agree to disagree love yeah mm. on that comment mm-hmm and the final comment on Marley and Rose before we move on to a different topic is from Pauline. Pauline's back. Pauline, woo. Pauline, <laughs> Pauline in the house. Pauline <laughs> in the house. Pauline's back and she's had her Wheaty Bix. Oh, go on. <laughs> or perhaps something more pharmaceutical. Uh, <laughs> so I don't. I don't really understand the first part of Paul. Well, I don't understand any of Pauline's comment, but the first part confused me the most because it was on a clip of Marley and Rose and she put missing you dot, dot, dot. And I don't know whether I'm assuming it's us. I'm going to take it that she's missing us for some reason. Um, About time the art of romance came back. A little old fashioned courtship. It's sweet and delicate how it can be when women act like themselves. Love's a two way street and patience is good. (laughs) What? (laughs) <laughs> they make the day. I literally scanned the Facebook page just for Pauline now. Um, there were yeah. so many things. Have you invited her to like our page yet? <laughs> there are so many things. Do it. There are so many things to unpick there. First of all, like, what show are you watching? <laughs> like, <laughs> I love her. I love her. Missing you. About time. The art of romance came back. A little old fashioned courtship. It's sweet and delicate how it can be when women act like themselves. Love's the two way street. Patience is good. It's like fortune. <laughs> it's like a fortune cookie. Yeah, Vomit. it's like. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's, she's been shaking that magic eight ball. Oh my God. <laughs> love her. More Pauline. We need more Pauline. Yeah. Um. So that's Marley and Rose. And the next topic, Facebook has labelled Kate a Klingon and Facebook Mm. has labelled Xander a wet lettuce. (laughs) So these are the comments. I can't contradict, to be honest. (laughs) No, I don't think I disagree with either of those things. So words of the day on Facebook, Caroline says she's getting in my wick. Xander is such a wet lettuce. Um, <laughs> Farney, friend of the pod, Farney on Twitter went a bit Hello, further than le- lettuce. <laughs> oh gosh, she, uh, she didn't call him a lettuce. She called him a, a massive funny, <laughs> which <laughs> makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah, he's a massive funny. He, yeah, he is a bit of a funny. You I'll say lettuce, I say funny. <laughs> Lettuce is a funny. <laughs> <laughs> lettuce funny. Uh, yeah, and then. D says, what a Klingon about Kate. Uh, Xander, wake up and smell the coffee. Jeez, stop being so bloody nice. Well, everyone drinks enough of it. Oh, they do, yeah, full of it. Um, <sighs> Sue, Sue says he needs to toughen up and get rid of that Klingon. Another Klingon. Klingon. She is, oh, uh, yeah. I, I, we all, uh, I mean, this is, we all agree. I give her mm-hmm. our thoughts on it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Why? I'm not having another breakdown. I'm not doing it. Uh, Michelle says, Klingon, get rid of her. 
Yeah, there's a lot. Klingon is the word of the word of the day. Word of the day. Yeah, it is wow. on Facebook. Uh, Mr. David on Twitter said, first Stacy, now Kate Zander sure knows how to pick them." Mm, he does yeah, indeed. He does. Uh, and then this is interesting because we just had a comment from someone on Facebook saying that they want um, Mac to get with Xander, but this person, Nikki, wants Mac to get with um, oh, sorry, with Marley. This person wants to get with um, Xander. I really hope not. I can see Xander and Mac together. So yeah. that's what that's what Nikki thinks. I really, you know, I hope. I think the thing was with are Rose and Marley back together for good, and she says I hope not because I can see him with Mac. I can't. So Mac I... and Z Xander, Mac and Marley. Are we shipping either of those ideas? No, no. I think Mac needs a bit of rough. Oh, she needs. Yeah. She needs. She needs a man's man, Mac. Yeah, I wonder if tiny has got any more cousins that aren't absolute snakes. <laughs> <laughs> he must have a few, surely. And the old Farnu. Yeah, see, she didn't. She was having. She was. He was just a plaything, wasn't he? Mm. Tiny's cousin. What was he called? I forgot his name. Oh, Kahu. Oh, who? Yeah, but we, there must be a nice one out there that's not married and not a thief. Maybe. Mm, maybe. But anyway, yeah. So that was. Xander and Kate and then the last comment I've got from Facebook Leslie says brilliant acting by all as always they deserve to win their rewards well done home and away yes and that brings me on to my last point which is about the inside soap awards so again inside soap awards inside soap.co.uk slash awards go and vote for best daytime star Voting closes at 12pm on Friday the 25th of August and you can vote for Justin, Theo, Flick or Leah. Thank you for listening. We will be back with more episode discussion from Summer Bay soon. Until then, join the discussion online at Coastal News Pod.